we'd like to show you a, a couple of different pumps that we carry in the Type 1 trailer. These are going to be our larger pumps, uh, a little different than the, uh, the Mark III. The Mark III being a 10 horsepower motor with a high pressure pump. We carry a larger 23 horsepower mo uh, motor connected to what's called the B2X pump end. It's a volume pump end. It connects to two and a half inch hose. So if you want to send volumes of water uh, to our uh, structure protection area, this is the pump that we can utilize. It's a four stroke motor, so it takes straight gas and it has crankcase oil. So we want to make sure before we fire this pump that we check the oil level. If we're uh, moving the pump around and we tip it on its side, we want to make sure we give it time for the oil to settle back in the crankcase before we fire it up. Now, a little bit about our setup here. Uh, this version has a tank on it. BC Wildfires versions have the external tank, so we can connect them just like we would a Mark III. Again, we just have to make sure that we're running straight gas in these and not mixed gas. So we're working on a dock. Uh, so with that, that means we're, we have a great water, water body here, a lake to uh, draw from, and then the supply, which is where these pumps work really, really well. We've secured our pump to the dock. There's a lot of vibration when the motor's running, so we want to make sure that it doesn't vibrate off the dock. Underneath the pump, because again, we're working all over a lake, uh, we've put down a, uh, a secondary form of containment. If we get any spillage of fuel or oil, it's not going to go into the lake. And we also have still kit uh, available to us as well, if by chance uh, our fuel can tips over or we get a leak in the crankcase oil, for instance. We want to make sure that uh, we don't allow any, any hydrocarbons to get into the lake water. We've also, uh, with, the larger, with the larger pump end, we have a larger suction hose. This is a three inch suction hose, so it gets very heavy. And again, like any of our other pumps as well, or any of other setups, we want to make sure that the suction strainer or the foot valve doesn't go right to the bottom of the lake. So we've attached a rope to our, our foot valve We've held it up onto the dock, off of the bottom of the lake, with our, uh, our rope here. We'd like to show you how to start this pump. Uh, we've already checked our oil. We've made sure that the oil level is good. We've, uh, we've got hearing protection in place. This is a loud motor, so we want to make sure that the operator is protected. Uh, one thing to note uh, on this pump is uh, we have an in internal fuel tank on it. Uh, it's a demo pump. Normally, our BC Wildfire pumps have an external fuel tank connection. So the fuel line with the priming bulb will be, bulb will be used, utilized to uh, make the connection here. So to start the pump, the control panel, we go to the on position. The ignition is in the on position in the upward position. The choke is in the opposite side of the fuel filter, the opposite side of the pump. So we move it towards the pump end. We're, we're choking it. Give it just a little bit of throttle. And then our rewind starter. procedure using the exhaust primer. Fortunately, it's a little too loud to be uh, be talking to you when, when the pump is in operation. But we're, the motor is running, we throttle it up just a little bit. We want to get water into the pump casing and we don't want to run the motor for a long period of time without water in the pump casing, otherwise we're going to do damage to the impellers. So when we're ready to prime, we open the priming valve. And then we're going to close the top of the exhaust port. What it's going to do now is it's going to divert exhaust gases past the valve into the pump casing and it's going to create a venturi effect where it's going to start to draw water up uh, from the suction hose. So we hold this down until we get water into the pump casing and when we start to show water through the discharge end of the, uh, the pump into the hose, 
Then we're going to slowly close off our priming valve and then we're going to release the handle off of the top of the, uh, the exhaust and allow the motor to run properly. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll start to adjust our, our RPM, our motor RPM with the throttle here and work at the desired pressure. So where we find good advantage of using a volume pump, the B2X pump end that uh, we just demonstrated, is again moving larger volumes of water. Uh, a, good, uh, a good opportunity, a lakefront community where we have a lot of structures right up on the lake, uh, we can put in a volume pump and we can actually run our two and a half inch line as a trunk line. So it's basically the feeder line which will support numerous sprinkler sets or hose line operations that we want to put into place. So as we go along the line, when we come to an area where we want to start our protection, we can put in a two and a half inch water thief, two and a half inch to inch and a half water thief, where now we can lead off with an inch and a half. We can start to, uh, we can build either a dead end system off of this, or we can build a uh, closed loop system, protect a number of structures, and then carry on down the road to the next cluster of structures that we might want to protect. Uh, one of the advantages of the volume system is that uh, we can protect, we can put out more gallonages and protect a lot more structures than we could off of just a high pressure system. Now this system here, the B2X pump end on uh, relatively flat ground is easily going to put out 2,000 feet of two and a half inch hose and support up to 20 three quarter inch sprinklers. We can increase the capacity or the coverage by stretching our line out and putting another B, uh, B2X pump in on the other end of our line so we can feed from both ends and create a balanced system. So from the B2X pump end we're discharging through two and a half inch hose. Now the benefit of the two and a half inch hose is that it uh, carries more water, more gallons per minute and it also reduces friction loss as opposed to an inch and a half hose. So this is where we're really going to gain some efficiency out of our hose line. One of the challenges though when we set up our, our two and a half, uh, if we create a, a single hose trunk line is that we have to make sure that our hose line is going to be protected because if we lose our trunk line then we lose everything that's tied to the system. So we really have to be careful in where we put our our trunk line hose system, our, our two and a half inch hose line.